Hello everyone and welcome back to biology. Today I'm continuing with lesson number 23 which is structure and function of higher plants and what I'm going to be talking about the higher plants um, today specifically is structure. So I'm going to be mentioning three specific words. I'm going to be talking about something called a stomata and flowers and pollen. So flowers and pollen might sound familiar to you, but um, stomata might be a new word for you. And let me just explain what it is, okay? Let's start off with what's familiar to us, flowers. Flowers is pretty much this part of our plants, flower. Okay, now the flower part is where the reproductive cells of a plant is produced. What? <laughs> Let me get into that. So this part is the flower. The flower is where the reproductive cells are produced. Okay. Now, pollen. Now, pollen is actually something that many people are allergic to. I'm personally allergic to pollen. Come spring season, my allergies are the worst and I sneeze really loud. Um, yeah, very loud. <laughs> Um, I sneeze very loud, so it's pretty irritating whenever I get allergies caused by pollen, whatever. Anyway, back to the subject. Pollen usually grows around this area of the flower, and my flower isn't too meticulous, but usually around the middle, it's yellow. Bees use it to create honey. Well, pollen is actually... The sperm cell. Well, actually, where the sperm cell is produced. So pollen acts as um, the grains of pollen are pretty much what the sperm is or where it grows and so when the pollen is spread around and it gets to other flowers that is when the flowers are able to reproduce now i mentioned that i was going to talk about something else and that is the stomata so if you know what stomata is that's awesome because i honestly didn't until i took biology class um the stomata is actually little pores in the leaves so remember stomata the stomata is little pores in the leaves and the purpose of those are to release excess water so release So if you have ever taken care of a plant or have water plants and somebody tells you like don't water it too much because you will drown it, plants can drown if you water them way too much. So the purpose of the leaves, um, I'm sorry, the stomata in the leaves, which are the little, which is what we call the little tiny pores inside of the leaves is to release the excess water. So you see those little droplets that probably you'll see afterwards, even if you didn't like wet over the, the plant. Um, that's usually the leaf releasing excess water. Okay, now, next up, in the next clip, we're gonna put up in a figure. Now you're gonna be pretty amazed and the reason I didn't draw it is because I can't do a really good job at it. But I want you to see where the ovary is. Now, 
we're getting into how these higher plants um, reproduce. You're going to find it interesting as to how a lot of the things that um, plants have are really similar to human beings. Obviously, they're not the same, but they have certain characteristics. Um, again, they have male sex cells, female sex cells. They have a place where they reproduce, obviously, different names, pollen, flower. Um, but an ovary is still called an ovary inside of a flower or a plant. Now remember, this is learning about structure and function of higher plants. Remember what the three things that designated a higher, or the three characteristics a higher plant had? If you do, that is going to be your assignment question for today. So please make sure you pay attention to this video. Let me answer that clip before we finish off though. Now you saw how it started off just like a flower and then where the pollen grains were which is what contains the mouse sex cell and where the ovary was right in the center of the flower. Now when those two conjoin and the ovary enlarge, that is when the fruit was able to be conceived <laughs> in a sense. Um, it was able to create fruit and the fruit what it does is that it protects multiple seeds and from that fruit and those seeds more plants are able to grow from it okay is it starting to make a little sense as to why plants have to go through all this process and why they're called higher plants because they have a very complex structure and function pretty much similar to humans they have vascular systems they have reproduction they have sex cells they have breathing water all that fun stuff that we actually that we as humans also need so it's pretty interesting to see how similar we as humans are to plants okay now remember i already asked what your assignment question is previously so make sure you pay attention to that throughout the video if you have any questions on anything, please do not hesitate and ask. I'm here to help. I hope to be hearing back from everyone very, very soon. And I hope you all have a very wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye.